You remember these little guys, Midland Painted Turtles? We collected them over at Bob's Place. Now it's time to work with custom aquariums to make them an epic new home. <laughs> Ted's Greenhouse, been around a long time. I've worked with them over the years, seen them at Chicago Flower and Garden Show, Eye Landscape Show, Mid Am Show. Known them a long time, great operation, and we are going to pick out some awesome plants. Hey, what's up, everybody? Ed the Palm Professor here. We are getting ready for the build for the brand new baby turtle tank. This is going to be an incredible project. So, what we're doing is we're creating, we have an octagon fish aquarium, and it's going to be more of a paludarium. So, it's going to be shallow water. We're going to have all types of tropical vegetations, cool stumps and logs and stuff like that, as well as some interesting rock work inside of it. But what I'm doing right now is I went down visiting a local nursery to pick out all the types of vegetation that we're going to need for this. I mean, just check this place out. So this is a well-known nursery in the uh, Chicago suburbs called Ted's Nursery and Greenhouse. They have a wide variety of all types of stuff here. So again, this is a little off time of the year, so it is uh, winter time here, but all types of really cool vegetation. Um, so I am having a lot of fun working with their team, picking out some of the plants for the upcoming project. <laughs> Endless choices. <laughs> That's actually too much. But it's exactly what we're looking for. All right, this is shaping up to be an incredible project. Those baby turtles deserve an incredible home. We rescued them from a certain fate. So baby turtles born out in the wild, high, high probability that they'll never make it to adulthood because the eggs are typically eaten right after they're laid and or as soon as they hatch um, when and they come out in the environment, these tiny little baby turtles are open to all types of predation. So the mortality rate is through the roof. So our friend Bob working with local university, doing some incredible conservation work, he entrusted us with some of these animals. We've known Bob for a long time. We originally built his pond. I designed it 20 plus years ago for turtles outdoors. He's been in the pet shop industry his entire life, huge conservation guy and when he was telling about the story of the turtles on his property coming out of the lake laying eggs and then all these nests just being destroyed the very next day it crushed us so he started putting different strategies of protecting them putting metal cages and barriers in between so predators couldn't dig those eggs up so now what we have we went out we worked with him we removed some of these baby turtles we brought them to our office keeping them indoors over the winter. We're gonna take care of them, we're gonna love them, we're gonna feed them, we're gonna grow them out to give them a good head start that they could be released back into the wild. So because of all this stuff, this is where the pond guy stepped in. He is a turtle fanatic. 30 plus years ago, the entire aquascape business started because he created a pond for turtles that led him to create aquascape as we know it today. So I loved it. I've been working side by side with Greg since 1993, unbelievable to even say, 29 years working together, and we both share a passion for nature, for conservation. We wanna see all these incredible animals not only make it into adulthood, but we wanna teach people along the way. We have thousands of people that come through our facility on a yearly basis. This new tank system is gonna be right smack in the middle of our retail store, and it's gonna be 360 degree usage and viewing. So you're gonna be able to walk around it, you're gonna see all the different layers and the turtles swimming around and how they interact with each other and the overall environment. This gives us that opportunity to teach people about these incredible animals. So what we wanna do is go over the top. Greg came to me, said, I want to design this system. So we met Mark Beavers and the team over at Custom Aquarium and Cages several years ago now over at the Aquashella event through George Mavrakis, Oral Fish 12G. So we obviously we hit it off with Mark right away. Again, another outdoor guy and he had the perfect tank. We were looking at it, this massive hex tank. This is where it's coming into play today. So we've officially ordered the tank. So what I want to do is come up with the overall plan, the overall design of what we want this thing to look like. Now, if it's anything at all like pond construction, which obviously I do on a regular basis, um, you know what's going to happen is I'm going to have a plan, but then I'm going to probably change it. I'm going to modify it. I'm going to be doing things on the fly because once you start piecing all these different things together, it's going to bring up more questions and things that are going to need to be addressed. So let's kind of hop right in here. 
The tank itself, as you can see over here, this is, it's gonna be six foot wide. It has a series of three foot panels that are 30 inches tall to make this hexagonal shape. So this is gonna be the stand down here on the bottom. So it's a metal frame. Down on the bottom, we have this incredible sump system filter, uh, pumping system. Mark and his team are taking care of all that stuff. I'm familiar with, with some of that stuff, but the technology has come a long way over the years. So the way this operates, because this is a paludarium, we have 30 inches high, as you can see, over here we're only going to fill it about halfway with water the water is going to overflow through these little skimmer type systems and there's a series of plumbing towers they're going to be right kind of in the middle of the tank and that's going to take all the plumbing down for the overflow as well as the pumping system back up so what we're going to do is we're going to have the water go down through this pipe system it's going to go through a pre-filter it's going to have this little uh, removable bag it's going to help remove some of the fines and sediments and stuff like that which is very important you've heard me say this a thousand thousand times before pre-filtration is key because the last thing you want to do is gum up a biological filter with large organic compounds when you do that the bacteria the nitrifying bacteria are going to suffocate they're not going to function the same this little bag system is going to capture all that debris the water is then going to flow out of that down into the bottom any of the smaller sediments can accumulate down here in the bottom as the water continues to overflow down inside of here this is going to fill up and then it has like this little overflow system. It's gonna take water down through a series of biomedias. As the water goes down through the biomedia, it's then gonna go through this little baffle system that's over here. It's gonna take the water up and over into our pump. Then from the pump, I didn't put those pipes in. It's gonna come in and it's gonna go through a series of discharge points and jets and things like that where we could have circulation. So it's a pretty clean, simple system. We're gonna load it up with all different types of aquatic vegetation, which is the next picture here that I want to show you because this is where it gets interesting. So we have the infrastructure itself, the tank, the platform, the beautiful steel stand that all this is going to hold because this is going to have 250, 200, 250 or so gallons of water inside of it once we're done. Obviously, a team over at Custom Aquarium and Cages, they do this on a daily basis. So what we're going to do, they figured out all the mechanics, just like when I'm doing a, a pond kit system, all the mechanics, all the details, the pumps, the plumbing, all that stuff is taken care of. It's been addressed. So now what I get to do, as well as Trevor, who works in our technical department, you've seen Trevor many, many times over the years. He has helped out with Team Aquascape. He's helped me out on a bunch of different projects. Most of the time he is here in our office answering questions, doing designs and drawings for contractors and retailers and people around the world but we do bring him out on very select projects he was just with me down at Blake's Exotic Animal Ranch doing all the prep work figuring out all that incredible stuff for that massive viewing window wetland filters and all of that crazy stuff that happened there but Trevor also super talented guy has been in the aquascaping career for quite a while and what I mean by aquascaping career he has done planted tanks for many many years designed and built his own pond so he's got a wealth of knowledge it's gonna be a perfect fit for me because the two of us are gonna tackle this project once we get the tank in place there is an incredible greenhouse nearby I'm gonna go there Ted's greenhouse southwest -ish, suburbs of Chicago Tinley Park area it's an area where I grew up They're an incredible greenhouse they've been around a long time they specialize in all types of unique plants I know they're gonna have everything we need down there I'm also gonna work with Dustin from Dustin's fish tanks because he is gonna supply all of the aquatics and he is just a blast to work with super energetic and passionate guy so I know I started talking to him I gave him some of the parameters that we have and he's already starting to come up with all these ideas so I kind of blew out the top section so here is uh, here's those two towers that I already talked about and I and I don't have those uh, all the infrastructure stuff in place on this one because I want to show you how we're gonna put it together at least my ideas my thought is down here in the bottom I we have some big aqua blue stone really really cool stone tons of character a very unique but it's very heavy it's difficult to work with it weighs over 200 pounds a cubic foot very hard dense stone my concern is we want to bring in some pretty big pieces and these pieces are going to be uh 200 or so pounds or so for the bigger ones we have to put them inside of this glass tank I'm a little concerned with that. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna take down here in the bottom, right, this little area that I kind of highlighted, I'm gonna use those drainage panels. So those little flow cell things, you've seen me use these on top of aqua blocks before, but it creates a hollow space. I use it for typically for water distribution, but what I'm gonna use it for here is actually a safety barrier. So now I could put all these little panels
falls down on the bottom and if we place a big rock it's going to cradle it inside of there so i'm not going to have a pressure point on top of the glass so this is going to give me a little bit of a cushion in case god forbid we drop one if we drop one of these stones it will shatter and crack the bottom of this tank so i'm going to take the necessary precautions now to make sure that we don't have any issues now once we have those drainage panels in place they are porous i'm going to cover it up with a geotextile you're going to hear me using a lot of terms that i use in the pond business for this water feature because the pond business obviously it's what i do on a daily basis so i want to protect this but i'm thinking of it as kind of a pond system so big boulders i'm going to drop in you know i love working with logs and stumps and things like that we have some incredible selection right here at our office so trevor and i will walk around we'll see what we can find i know we're going to be able to dig up some things that are going to work for this application because we're replicating a native illinois type of a system now the rocks that we chose are not native Illinois. They are coming from Wisconsin. The logs and things like that, these are pretty much local logs. But again, the reason I'm doing this is we're replicating an aquatic habitat, having different surfaces, having different structures, different textures, putting all these different pieces in place is gonna make the turtles feel at home. And that's what it's all about. I wanna create a very unique environment that's not only aesthetically pleasing for all the visitors that are gonna come through our office, but I want the turtles to thrive in this type of a system because the stronger they are, the healthier they are, the higher their chance for survival once we release them back into the wild. So I'm going to be coming in here with some of these massive aqua blue boulders. Now I don't want to put huge thick rocks in here because it's going to take up too much volume. So what we're going to do is we're going to find some thinner ones that are going to give us the necessary height but not take up a lot of water space. So what I want to do is I want to hide these two towers that are in the middle. We want to hide all the plumbing and all that stuff exactly like what I would do in a backyard water feature. I don't want to see the infrastructure. So we do have some hollow chambers in between here that I don't just want to fill with gravel and stuff like that because it'll probably become anaerobic. So what I want to do is I'm going to use Aquabox. Again, the same time-tested technology I use on a daily basis. This is just going to take up space for me. So it's going to take up sheer space, but it's not going to take away from the water volume. So once I have that in place, I'm going to cover it up with more of that geotextile. Then I could just layer on top of that river rock and things like that to kind of create the necessary elevations that I'm looking for. Remember, this is a paludarium style. So that means we're gonna have a water area, then it's gonna transition from that deep water zone, river rock, some sand, some of that beautiful aquatic vegetation from Dustin's fish tanks, up through these logs and stumps, and then it's gonna become kind of a, almost like a mesic type system, so medium water. So not totally saturated, so I could have different layers of vegetation going through here to create this unique environment. But let me get back to the design here. So we're gonna have these aqua blocks down here in the bottom. Uh, we're gonna come in with big boulders. Here you can kind of see I have some of these logs kind of inside of here. Again, I don't know what these things are actually going to look like. We're going to have to find some different pieces that we have. Then I'm going to start layering in and I'm going to put in these little plant pockets. So these little pockets, we have aquatic planters that we use in water features and it's basically a woven bag and then we can put an aquatic soil inside of it. This aquatic soil, very, very important. It basically it mimics an alluvial soil. Alluvial soils are typically found in those floodplain areas along river systems. So it's where the sediments and stuff settle out during the heavy rainy seasons. So this soil mixture is exactly what we're looking for because it's that kind of that saturated soil environment. So we're going to have these little pockets and bags and things like that. Once we have those, then I can come in and I can plant them up with all types of vegetation and I can get stuff growing inside of here. You know, some little leafy ferns and stuff like that. So I want to have all this stuff kind of popping out of these little pockets to give it that naturalistic look. But it's also gonna be home for microorganisms. It's gonna be home for insects and things, which is the natural food source for the turtles. It's also gonna create a, an, a serene environment where they can kind of tuck themselves under that vegetation exactly like what they would do in the wild. The other reason that I'm coming in with all these different stumps and stuff, we are, we're gonna make like little runways. We're gonna have these stumps kind of coming up out of the water, but the turtles can actually climb 
climb up and out onto some of these branches. And remember, I'm gonna light this thing up. So we have access above with this beautiful pergola system that we have. We'll be able to hang different lights down, grow lights and heat lamps and stuff like that. And we could strategically locate those over the planted areas. I'm gonna put in a little basking zone right over in here someplace. I wanna hide those big towers. So what my thought is, I'm just gonna put a big old slab of stone right smack on top of it. It's gonna be good and stable. I could position one of those lights over it. The other reason I'm gonna do that, if I ever need to access it, I could pull this stone slab off and I have access to all that plumbing going inside. So I'm always thinking from a maintenance perspective as well as a functional perspective. The other thing that we're doing, I mentioned we're gonna have aquatic vegetation. Again, my drawing doesn't show all these different little layers, kind of hard. I'm gonna have aquatic plants down on the bottom. Can't wait to see what Dustin creates. We're gonna have river rock, we're gonna have sand environments, we're gonna have plants, we're gonna have logs, we're gonna have stumps all these different things that really are going to push this thing over the top. And again, this is just the initial thought process. I can't wait to see what happens once the tank is here. We can position it. We can see the size of it. This thing's six foot wide. So it's a massive tank. It's going to hold a lot of water. So it's going to give us a ton of flexibility to create a truly unique one of a kind system for these baby Midland turtles. Stay tuned. This project is going to be over the top.